Why don't you uh, give us a little opening statement? Thanks for coming. Cross country is prohibited by the NCA from beginning practices for another three weeks. And we don't compete on a varsity level until October 4th. So uh, we're a long way from going, but uh, students are returning to town as are all the regular civilian students and it's good to see them and uh, whatever damage happened over the summer. Uh, with that, I'd rather take questions than give a statement. So I'm all yours. Well, they know the whole time that some of the team is training. I think if there was a, an uprising, a revolution, and they decided to agree to do nothing over the summer, I, well, I'd be in trouble. But they all know somebody's out there. They all know Joe Klecker is out there running 15 miles a day and that he'll murder them when they come back out of shape. So it's uh, a mutually supportive uh, culture of fear. Okay, well then, thanks for coming. Coach. Yes. With the, the women coming back as the defending national champions, but you're not gonna have Danny there, what's the, what's the women's squad gonna look like? I know that you've added two individuals to it. Of the seven who ran on that championship team, four are gone. Of the five who scored, three are gone. The women's individual winner, Danny Jones, is gone. Eighth place in the NCAA, McKenna Morley, is gone. We're pretty cleaned out. Uh, but there are some good people back from that team. There are some good people that were waiting on the shelf a year ago. And then, as you mentioned, we've had a couple of transfers that look useful. So uh, we might rebuild to be a pretty good team. Mark, I, I got a question about expectations well, with your team. I mean, you sit in your office, you're surrounded by national championship trophies. Uh, every year, you're competing at that level. Do you talk with your student athletes about expectations, or is that just kind of an unspoken expectation with, with your group? It's unspoken. Associate Head Coach Burroughs and I know that the culture starts with us, and the team knows that if they arrive at 8.01 to the parking lot on a Sunday morning, we will have left. They know what the expectations are without discussing it. The ones that can't handle it, don't handle it, and are uh, eliminated, self-eliminated. A little bit about the women's side. Can you talk a little bit about the men's side? I mean, we obviously have three All-Americans returning that are very fit and ready to go, but there, who else are, who do you expect to maybe fill those other spots on the team? Our men's team finished fourth a year ago. They um, were fighting a little bit above their weight to do that, I think. Maybe they did better in the snow than some other teams. But uh, the top two runners from the team return, the fourth runner from the, routine, the team returns. The only person we lose uh, from the really critical to the score was uh, Ryan Forsythe. He's off to grown-up life. Uh, <clears throat> and we don't have an immediate, obvious elder ready to come up like we do in the women's case. So we're looking at some young guys, some people that were uh, redshirt freshmen last year, or freshmen who redshirted last year. But also we have a couple of true freshmen that might be the rare 18-year-old that can help a contender men's cross-country team. So, uh, yeah, we, need, we have three good runners, I think, and we need a few more, and I'll find out in October.
a cross country runner or a distance runner at the University of Colorado has to be in the elite of the NCAA Division I. And so when we're recruiting, we're looking at a small population in general of the whole country, a handful of people out of the whole country. I get a lot of emails from coaches that say, my guy is the Bluebird Conference champion, and it's, I, I've yet to find a way I'm comfortable with of saying, hey, he's a minute too slow. <laughs> and so we're looking at people who are among the very best in the whole country, as I said, probably out of a population of maybe 20 or 25. We occasionally take some people that are optimistic investments, maybe. Uh, that's the case this year. We have a couple of people that I think are going to grow fast and a lot. But it's, it's hard. It's very elite. It's hard. Uh, the further, I should say, there's some place in the NCA for almost anybody. Any young man or woman who wants to compete cross country or track and field in the NCA between division one, two, and three and the kind of subdivisions along the way, there's a place for everywhere, somewhere, everybody somewhere. Coach, can you give an early assessment of what you believe the Pac-12 is going to be like this year? Who are some of the teams, both men and women, that are going to be up there with Colorado? I'm glad you mentioned that. The Pac-12 is the most difficult cross-country conference in the country, uh, undoubtedly. If you were to look at the top 10 at the NCAA championships in the last decade, you see Colorado, Oregon, Stanford, Washington, occasionally UCLA. Uh, there was a while that uh, Arizona was a, a top-level women's program. It's very difficult. <laughs> uh, you can lose the Pac-12, as our women did, and win the NCAA three weeks later, as our women did. So Stanford has very good rosters returning, but will have a completely new coaching staff. Oregon loses almost all the women who were third, maybe, last fall, but they have no problem reloading. Uh, they recruit all over the world and they can have brand new 22 year olds who are national caliber runners by this August. Uh, Washington has a new staff but a proven staff and some good people returning. Uh, so everybody's had their challenges in the last 11 months as have we with graduation but uh, everybody will be good again. Finally, how good can we be? Uh, we absolutely can win, both of them. But so could Oregon, so could Stanford, so could Washington. Do we have any more questions for head coach Mark Whitmore? All right. Thanks, Thank you everybody. Very much.